Welcome to the latest episode of Ascent Life brought to you by Centenary Bank. First of all, all, thank you so much to the Centenary family for making such conversations possible. I mean, us being able to sit here and have such conversations that do tackle day-to-day -day financial decisions is a very good move and we do appreciate that. I'm going to be your host, Sandra Twinobio. I am a news anchor with NTV Uganda. I'm also an entrepreneur in fashion and digital marketing. Now today, you may be wondering why are we here today. This episode is sponsored by Centenary Bank, but also it is for the youth. We want to speak to the young people of this country. We know that more than 70% of Uganda's population belongs to the young people. And what that simply means is that if we don't empower our young people, we are likely to suffer consequences in the future in terms of development. And this is why today we want to understand specifically how do we make the right financial decisions to get to where we want to get. And today we speak about how to get value from an investment clap and today we have a great panel of speakers i can guarantee you we have a kampa tanbu he is the executive coordinator youth advocacy foundation uganda thank you so much for joining us today thank, thank you, you for coming to the podcast thank you sandra for hosting us great we also have prosi namuru who is the supervisor youth banking centenary bank thank you for joining us today thank you sandra well, I want to quickly dive into this conversation. If you've heard about investment clubs, you must be aware that this is a process where people, two or more, come together to really do things they wouldn't ideally do if they were alone. Do you need to have a lot of money or you just need to have just a little bit? This is the conversation that we are going to dive into and I want to quickly throw this question to Akampa Tanbo. You are consistently working with young people, for example, your interaction with them, what are the, their issues when it comes to investment? Well, thank you for that question, Sandra. Um, young people in this country are productive, sure. are creative. Mm -hmm. And uh, what this means is that um, in the subsequent uh, years, we'll see the productive um, rate increasing. Because if it wasn't because of COVID-19, um, would be at a takeoff stage mm -hmm. as a country, as Uganda. So um, what they need as young people is how to give them the right information, okay, on the importance of investment clubs because if they have this right information then they are able to take uh, decisions okay they are able to know uh, how these investments uh, investment clubs work they are able uh, to pull to mobilize um, their friends their colleagues their relatives mm -hmm. okay and uh, their community into seeing or even leveraging on how to leverage on the, the investment clubs so I think what government needs to do uh, together with um, private players like Centenary Bank and, um, and us in the civil society, Youth Advocacy Foundation Uganda and others, is that we need to invest in developing the capacities of young people. We need to invest in sensitizing them, mm -hmm. sensitizing the young people out there so that they get to know how important it is to work or to pull resources together. The main gist or the importance of investment club uh, uh, clubs is that they want to make more money, mm. okay? But as young people, they do not have the resources. Do they have the right information? Do they have uh, the, the, the experiences? Do they have where to learn from or even and learn? Well, over to you, Prosi. When you look at uh, the population of Uganda, we're seeing that it belongs to the young people. 77% of it belongs to young people. And you're constantly interacting with young people. What should our concern be at the moment? Thank you so much, Sandra. I believe having a population of 77% being young people, how can we pull resources amidst these challenging situations? You know, resources are limited. People will be like, ah, you know, COVID has hit us hard. We can't handle. Mm -hmm. Everyone is constrained. So what do we need to do? One, how to advise the young people out there, form investment clubs. If you do not belong to one already, go ahead and form one. You can do it. You just need to have four people to start a constitution, form a constitution, select amongst yourself the governing structure that maybe this one will be the treasurer, this one will be the secretary. Decide on the goal you want to achieve and by when. And when you do that, you'll be good to go. Just register that constitution or bylaws with URSB, that is Uganda Registration Services Bureau. You'll be good to go with your investment club. And apart from that, sometimes young people say, hmm, 
but you know, we don't have money, we don't have capital. You have the gift of the resources around you. Use one, the social capital that you have. True. You have parents, you have friends, you've gone to school probably, you have OBs and OGs. Look into these, form a catalog and say maybe, I have, I'm still in touch with so many OBs and OGs. I have so many parents and uncles, even mm. people abroad, but do you benefit from them in any way? Of course, they also don't have money to keep sending to you directly. Make, the re make use of the resources you have. Mm. When you use them very well, for example, if you start a, a business, you say, I don't have market. Use the people you have. They'll be the first market. Your that social you network. Have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Use your social network. And the other thing I'd like to advise the young people, please, you see these fingers? They are not equal. If you put <laughs> a ruler here, they're not straight, you know? So that means you're also different. Yeah. Even if you're a sibling, you have your sister or brother, we are all made different. You have a special talent, a unique talent in you. You have that unique skill that you can develop. Rely on that, depend on that, because the resources will never be enough. You could be a musician, start. People will start listening to you, they'll buy in. Mm. You have a phone, use it. Don't only keep tweeting, updating your status on Snapchat and Twitter and Facebook, you know, WhatsApp, you keep changing your status mm -hmm. minute after minute. Use it to update your status with the things that you're doing. True. For example, if you've started a small business, passion fruits, how much money do you need to start a passion fruit business? Just go buy passion fruits for say 2,000, buy mangoes for 2,000, make good juice, package it well. Then put on Facebook, put on Twitter, Snapchat. People will be there and be like, okay, I think mm -hmm. this is something. So I think we just need to open our minds and say, let us start. From what I pick from you, it's very important for young people to just start. I mean, if you have an idea, do not keep it in your mind. Yes. Write it on paper, but also take it into action. You know, it may be difficult at the start. I think one of the biggest problems that young people have is the starting point. You know, where do I start from? How do I start? Who do I start the, it with? The fear. Yeah, the, the fear, fear that comes with it. The fear to get started. The fear to, to, to test the waters. Mm. The fear... Yeah that the world out there is, is, is so hard. That yeah. feeling. The, the other thing about investment clubs is that they first do uh, some bit of research. True. You research and get to know what exactly you want to invest in when you pull the funds or even the resources together. Mm. And, uh, and, and this gives a platform or even gives space for people to learn because investment clubs pull uh, people from different backgrounds with different experiences or even expertise. Yes. Okay. So even young people can start investment clubs and even invite adults who are out there who have done something to also join them. Mm -hmm. And investments, inv investment clubs will attract, okay, the resources. They will attract investors who would want to know uh, which clubs are doing what. And but how they can investors love to work with organized groups. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So young people should not be afraid. Yeah. Get started. The future is brighter. Well, also if you if you're to look at statistics, you will agree with me that in the region, Uganda is still one of those countries that does not have young people taking part in investment clubs. Where is the challenge? If you were to if I was to give it to you, proceed. Thank you very much, Sandra. Uganda is actually highly an entrepreneurial country. True. But the challenge is what Turnbull has just talked about. We fear that fear to start. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, I think we lack information. For any youth out there, do you know that if you're four people, you can start an investment club, just for one, two, three, four. Get people with similar investment and financial aspirations. Register your constitution. For example, for us in the bank, even if you don't know how to write a constitution to form an investment club, we would gladly share one. Mm -hmm. You just edit and then it suits your club. We register it for you with URSB and you'll be good to go. I think there is fear and lack of knowledge. Now, I want us to speak about the challenges. I mean, we are talking about an investment club, but why an investment club actually? Why Tanbo, why an investment club? Why should I, Sandra, today mm -hmm. decide to choose Prosi, decide to choose John, decide, decide to choose Doreen to be part of an investment club? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the benefits before we dive into the challenges. Yeah, um, why an investment club? But before I go to why an investment club, um, our young people have not been attracted to investment clubs because of um, 
the biggest reason is that they have not been mobilized enough okay they the 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 banks we should be having have largely concentrated or even deliberately concentrated on women you know women have more investment clubs mm. than youth i think it's okay? just that we are very entrepreneurial yes yes so uh, <laughs> so it is deliberate that um uh, centenary bank and other partners get to sensitize get to mobilize the young people mm. and um, the benefits are that um, you get information okay when you join an investment club then you pull resources together okay mm. when you pull resources together you have shared benefits okay as an investment club as investment club members and uh, in case there is a loss it is spread across okay mm. it's not just a loss for uh, one individual or even sole proprietorship yes so young people should know that those benefits are there mm. and they will be for them to yeah. grow shared risks yes. and also shared profits i want us to put it in in, in lemman's language when yes. we talk about the shared risks what are we actually saying for me how i get it is that if i have two million and i invest all my two million and i lose it i've lost all of it but if we are like say maybe four people and you are all bringing in five hundred thousand if we lose i've only lost five hundred thousand is that what you're trying to mean yes if uh if we are ten people uh each person has brought in um uh two million that is 20 million okay mm -hmm. and uh if we have made a loss uh, let's say of 500,000, uh, it is spread across. Mm -hmm. It's not the entire 2 million going. True. Okay, because if you got the 2 million or even the 20 million and invested in, into something, into a business, okay, into, into an investment, then that investment uh, does not get to make profit. Mm -hmm. Your 20 million as an individual will suffer. But when you have invested as people, then the money that uh, you make in losses is spread across mm. okay then if you make benefits because you have pulled money together uh, it means if you have each person if, if the the investment has brought in uh, let's say 1 million 1 million uh, at the end of at the end of the month then that 1 million is spread across mm. the, the the 10 or even the five people okay so that is what it means by shared uh, profits shared gains and and shared losses Great. Uh, Sandra, yes. maybe now, to nail it further, mm. among us the benefits, for example, we have an investment club within us. We are 10 and we contribute 200,000 per month. But we were able to pay, yesterday I got our titles. We have paid for five plots of land. So that means if I was alone, probably I would not be able to set aside this money. But this year, I'm walking away as a proud Ugandan that I've at least added with a number of, of black exactly. titles. <laughs> yeah, right, so right, there right. is that economies. You enjoy the economies yeah. of scale. We're going to start addressing you differently. Exactly. <laughs> you are now a landlord. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so now, if you're to look at the conversations on social media, you agree with me as well that most of the young people usually say they are limited opportunities. You know, I want Prosy to speak to our young people today that think there are limited opportunities out there. They cannot compete favorably the question the bigger question how do they compete favorably the opportunities are enormous the opportunities are open to everyone mm. they are actually not limited just change your mindset change your perception the way you think is how far you'll go people want to work with groups now look at government we are going into parish development model mm. who will benefit people who are organized in groups form an investment club go and register you'll be having opportunities out there. Mm. And remember, by the way, you're not going to remain young forever. Sure. And if you want to live that life that you admire to keep on the top, you must build a fireplace in your youth. If you want to keep warm in the old age, build a fireplace now. Absolutely. Use the difference in you because we are all different. Like Prosy said, if you make your intentions very clear and you state your objectives and your goal very clear, investments will come to you mm. people resources will come to you yeah. so you need to get started get the idea out don't just keep it in your head or in your mind pull people bring people together the resources will come following you because human beings are also resources 
All right, thank you, Akampa and Prosi, for that conversation. I trust they've set the pace for this conversation. You're getting the, a brief idea of what it means to get into an investment club and what you need to actually have to get into one. Besides, it's not that difficult. Look around, you're different. Look around and find people that share your same vision and come together and create something as wonderful as an investment club that will see you grow in all aspects of your life. Maybe become a landlord or become a business owner or become anything that you would ideally want to be. We'll take a short break and Centre Live podcast will return shortly. Welcome back and thank you for staying with Sente Live podcast. Before we went in for a short break, we're talking about how the young people can leverage their investment clubs and actually benefit them from them and grow even further. And I just want us to continue from there and I'll drop this question to Prosi. I think Akampa had mentioned a few things of how they can leverage investment club. According to you, from experience, I know you're already a landowner and all, the, all of those things. <laughs> but did. If you, if you to, to speak to the young people that are watching us today, how can they leverage their investment clubs to benefit their growth? There are so many challenges out there that people in investment clubs face. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be a king of some sort, wherever yeah. they are. You're a chairperson to an investment club and you feel, yeah, Chino I know it all. Chino I Chino decide, Chino. yes. Yeah. You carry it like it's in a briefcase. Mm. For example, I'm a treasurer in one of the investment clubs. And I just received titles on behalf of my investment club. But even when we're writing the agreement, it is spelled out clearly that Prosi Namobilu signing on behalf of this investment, this investment club. club yeah. So it is not your thing that even if I went, say, I passed on, it will be clear that it is for the investment club. Such things build trust amongst the members. Just work on those few issues, governance structure, trust, and then also always communicate and don't take so long without investing mm. if you have this money you want to do some investment invest it so that people see that there is a future in this resources are not only looked at in forms of cash, this hard cash, cash. liquid yeah. cash mm. yes not only in liquid cash but it could be in forms of resources like people come with different skills yeah. different talents I expertise. could be here, yes, different expert. That's the word, expertise. expertise. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, for example, I could be in an investment club and I'm generally organized. Mm. I'll have those books clearly spelled out. A is A, B is B. So when I go with that organization, the club benefits from it. True. You could have another one. It's a very good mobilizer. If you have an activity, you could be amongst yourselves, even at your place of work or back home at the village. One is a talented organizer. Mm. So if you have that kind of person, you need to organize anything, just know that person will be there. You could have another one is very keen on time. You don't keep time, you're off. If you have a meeting, for example, you'll be there to remind you, you have time. So these resources, the expertise that we pull together, build great investment clubs so leave alone the resources but you have so many other benefits you enjoy economies of scale mm. for example i told you for us we'll be able to buy two acres of land in one of the investment clubs leave alone this one where i've just bought five plots <coughs> You buy. I have respect for you because you have how many investment <laughs> clubs are you having two, at the moment? <laughs> two. I belong to two investment clubs at the um, moment. And so you're, you're getting like uh, different streams of income from different uh, investment clubs. Yeah. That's, exactly. That's a good exactly. initiative. So that one we were 13. We bought two acres of land and we split. Each one of us walked away with a 50 by 100 title. Very nice. So you cannot do that alone because we realize at the end of the year each one of us had saved about six million mm. and as proxy i don't think i would be able to set aside six million purely mm. as savings you know it takes discipline to save true it's not about how much you earn but it is a discipline and we need to teach the young ones right from infancy 
Mm. Even if it is pocket money given to you at school, save. Now, I want us to speak to the jobless young people out there that are probably going through their, their YouTube and they land on this Center Live podcast. And they're thinking, I don't have money. I don't have a job. You're, talk you're talking to me about an investment club. Where do you want me to start from? Akampa, where do they start from? Is that mine or it's from? It is yours. Oh, okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think, by the way, young people have money. You find a young person having um, uh, a phone that I cannot afford. <laughs> One million eight hundred thousand. This is just a phone. Yes. It, it, it depreciates mm. or the value goes down each and every time. Mm. So that one million uh, phone or five or six hundred, seven hundred phone, you are spending money on data. You can reduce score. We are not saying that we are not saying that you leave social media. No, we are saying if you have been using 20,000 every week for data, is it possible for you to use uh, 10,000? Mm -hmm. Can it be possible? So that you only go online to do, to check on your people or to do the things that should be mattering on moving you forward as a young person. You will not be, we will not be young people forever. We will not be young people forever. So yeah. we should be not worried, but we should be working towards a better future. How? When you look at those resources around you, the people around you, you have now finished self-reflection. You can put a th aside 10,000 uh, if you have been using that of 20,000. Then you get to look through your family, my entire family, my entire clan. I have people who believe in me. Mm. I have people who have supported me. I, have, I, I don't have parents. So I've grown from that childhood six months my parents left me when i was six months i have been supported up to university mm. okay now i'm an adult okay but they have supported me out of their willingness okay mm. because they care there is they believe in me there is something much they say i can do okay so if you shared the idea you have the idea of starting up an investment club with them okay it is that idea that they will support because they believe and trust in you, mm -hmm. okay? Then, away from the family, away from your clan, you can look at your OBs. It's a community. Your OBs and your OGs, okay? Where are they? What are they doing? Some are working, yes. You, for you, don't have a job yet, but you can get some small money here and there. And, and, and there are youth who are doing hustles, okay? They are doing different hustles and getting some money. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, this money, if you brought them on board, uh, they will do, they will contribute and your investment club will move forward. Well, for you who's watching us today, all we can tell you is share with us your thoughts on the investment clubs on our social media platforms. I mean, follow Centenary Bank and use Centenary Live Podcast. Share with us your, co your comments, your views on investment clubs. I mean, what is your experience? Have you started one? Did it work for you? Is it working for you? Did you leave one? Why did you leave it? Share with us your thoughts. We'll be like really glad to interact with you just to better understand why some people are getting investment clubs, why others are not in them and why others are leaving them. So as we conclude this conversation i want to come to you again proceed if there is a young person out there that is going through their youtube and seeing center live podcast and they're thinking i don't have a job i don't have money you're telling me about investment clubs from where you sit how do they start when you don't have money at all you don't have money at yeah. all but you're alive you have yes. life yeah you have hope mm. that's a very good starting point mm. you have life you have hope keep yeah. the hope Starting an investment club is quite simple. Look for people whom you think you have trust in them and then you believe in the same thing. I said you should be people with similar investment aspirations and financial aspirations. Yeah. If you're one who thinks that I want to bake my cake and have it, then I think an investment club would not be a good idea for you. Mm -hmm. But have that idea let it see, see it grow. Like you have a baby, you see that baby crawl and walk. That's how investment clubs work. You need to have patience. There's a degree of patience mm. that you need to have. And in the bank here, Centenary has always advised so many young people on how to form investment clubs. We always have sessions. We have training sessions for people who are 
interested in forming investment clubs and those that are already having investment clubs, we advise them on different investment options. We advise them on how to overcome the challenges that they are facing. So if you're out there and you're interested in starting an investment club, we'll be readily available. Mm -hmm. You either call our free toll number or visit any Centenary Bank branch or a website will be readily available to support you. Google about Kenya, mm -hmm. how investment clubs work in Kenya. There's so many taxis, the cabs that are in Kenya, a uh, majority of them are owned by investment clubs. We can do the same here. Now, beyond investment clubs at Centenary Bank, what are some of the strategies or um, avenues that you have that can support the youth to achieve their dreams? The free financial literacy that we give, we identify youths. For example, we put out there on our, on our Facebook pages and we say maybe we'll have a training such and such, on such and such a topic. Then we identify people interested, they come on board. Then sometimes this being a church founded bank. Mm. The church has very organized structures. For example, it has so many dioceses, it has so many parishes, and there are youth leaders at each and every level. So we work with those youths at those various levels. We go and give free financial literacy to the youth out there. Mm. Then we also go to the parishes because for somebody out there who is probably not Catholic, they would be like, oh, I think we are kind of left out. No, we also work with parishes. We go to the parishes. We work with the leaders there at the youth, the youth leaders at the parish level. So apart from that, we also offer skilling programs. Mm. You know, it is one thing to be financially literate. For example, you know how to manage your budget. You know how to do the budget. But it is another to have the hands of the skill, the knowledge that you need. And actually next week, we have a training for youths in Bunamwaya. Mm. We are going to skill them in how to do phone repairs. I believe that is a tangible skill that even after that training, the youths out there can go and start business right away in that direction. We work with partners like Tanbul here, through Yafu, we support. And then we are able to reach out to more youth, say at the university or others. And actually he has done a good job in mobilizing youths out there to get border borders. Mm. So we work with other youth related organization, youth led organizations. We still support and then we see how we can have more youths on board. We also offer internship and placement opportunities. There are youths here in the bank because they have been given an opportunity to do their internship from here. Yeah. And now they are part of us, their mm. staff. Mm. We also give them cheap loans that you can hardly find anywhere. As cheap as 11% interest, you can get them at Centenary Bank. Mm. I know of a youth down there in Chiseni. He repairs weighing scales. Mm. He has gotten three youth loans so far. And he has now made a company because at first he could not, his colleagues, they had a group, his colleagues, Actually, this would be a good example to the youth out there. We trained them, we gave them financial literacy. And within that group, the training that we had of about 80 youths, they formed a group, they identified themselves and said, but why don't we put this work into practice? So they formed a small association. But it was only him who had a degree. Mm -hmm. And it was only him who would qualify to get this loan. And he came to the bank, he borrowed the first time. We gave him five million. He went and started that business, small in Chiseni. Then after two years, he came back, borrowed 10 million, still took it to the business. He would borrow on behalf of the company. And then he said, I think we need to register this and it becomes a real company. Yeah. And as I speak today, that youth is able to repair weighing scales in the whole of East Africa. And I'm glad that at least I contributed mm -hmm. to his well-being. So youths out there, take advantage. There is strength in numbers. Form investment clubs, it's the way to go. You'll make it. Thank you so wow. much. Proceed, Namoviru, for that. I, I mean, it's, it's, it has touched me myself. I may live here with a loan from this uh, bank too. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> to create something. Uh, that was Prosi Namuru, the supervisor, Youth Banking Centenary Bank. Thank you for sharing with us your thoughts on investment clubs and why it is important for young people to do that. Now over to Akampa Tanbo, your parting shots as we conclude this conversation. Yes, um, I had thought Prosi was going to forget that uh, we have done... Uh, <laughs> Annual <laughs> National Youth Skills Development Expo yes. uh, expositions <laughs> that bring together entrepreneurs, uh, young people who are uh, who are involved in different skills and and, and, and businesses. Uh, those who have not gone to school but um, would want to get skills, please, there are opportunities for skilling, hands on, hands on. So do something, get started with something, and um, the future is going to be better. And the future belongs to those who have started, who started like yesterday and those who have been organized. Thank you so much. The future is going to be better for the organized indeed. Thank you so much, Akampa Tanbu. He is the executive coordinator, Youth Advocacy Foundation, Uganda, IAFO. Thank you, uh, lady and gentleman, for joining us on this latest episode of uh, the Center Live podcast. We appreciate your presence. Thank you. Thank Sandra. you for hosting us. Now, and thank you to Centenary Bank. Absolutely. By the way. Absolutely. Keep it our bank. Mm. Absolutely. Our bank. Yes. Well, now, this is a conversation I trust can go on and on, but we trust that if we use our social media platforms, we can reach out to more young people to make the right financial decisions while they're still young. I do know that as you grow old, you know, the right financial decisions that you make at in your 20s, in your 30s, I mean, will determine the kind of life you will live in your 50s and 60s. So surround yourself with the right people, surround yourself with the right energy, the right content, and you'll be able to you'll be able to make the right decisions. I trust that if you go out there and you look for this information, you can find it. Like Prosy mentioned, there's always information on Centenary Bank page. So why not follow it and try to keep up with what they post? Make the right decisions in order to make a better life for yourself. Thank you so much for joining us on this latest episode of Centre Live. I've been your host, Sandra Twinaudio.